Thursday, everyone. All right, tonight we are continuing to put our blocks together. So we have these blocks of four, and uh, all week we have been connecting to them connecting them to each other using the quilt as you go process. So we're putting a little binding strip and a little sashing in there to connect all our pieces together. Together. So this is the last one that we have and then we are connected for the week and uh, tomorrow we'll be starting a new block. So thanks again you guys for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. And I'm here for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end. So you can be part of the whole process along the way. All right, so we had a repair or two that we did yesterday on this. So I can show you that. And we have one little repair to do on this larger one. Uh, before we attach them together. So that is the plan. Nice seeing all you come in. All right. Hello, hello. Okay, good. I, I'm seeing some YouTube people found me. YouTube was being a little mean today. Um, but good. I'm, I'm happy to see you guys popping in there. And I'm also on Facebook. So hello, all Facebook peeps. Okay. So this is our last block. I actually have no finished um, of the interior blocks anymore, so we're going to have to start from scratch again uh, tomorrow. But I'm really happy that we got far on getting everything put together. That's exciting. So here are some of the repairs that I did yesterday. We have, you can kind of see them here. I have this strip going up here. And the reason we're doing repairs is because I got too much batting there. Like I didn't think by just sewing it in, I thought I'd have like a hole. Um, so that guy is there. And then the other repair, which is a little bit bigger, we did at the bottom here. So you can see again, there's that much batting that was there. So uh, now that it's all covered up and we can sew this on without worrying about uh, not having enough fabric there. Uh, now here, this, this one clearly was a big issue. Uh, we must have worked on this uh, earlier in the week. So this is a bigger repair. So a lot of batting up there. And then here's the last repair we have to do. This one we definitely have to do because this is actually more than a quarter of an inch. So we need to cover up that um, chunk there. And then that's where we will um, sew the other, other piece to. We'll put these two together like that with our another little sashing piece with a little uh, fabric in the middle and our binding piece for the back. And that that is how we cover up our raw edges. And that's right down here. We'll do the same thing. Okay, so we need a piece that's that big. I've been just kind of using um, old, like just uh, sashing pieces that I've cut already. I've just been using that for my repairs. And I'm, I'm seeing that I have a little piece left over here. And I think this might be just enough to address this little bit here. Yeah, and then it can go down a little that way. Great. So I'm going to start by sewing these two pieces together. And then uh, um, we'll be able to do this repair. Not Sharon's in smoky Southern California. Oh, hello from Florida. Yeah, it's been, um, man, those pictures from Colorado and California are pretty crazy. I mean, I don't know. I like the Midwest. We don't have hurricanes. We don't have big fires every summer. We have the cold. We have some hefty, hefty cold. Um, but I just see that as killing all the giant spiders. <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. We got tornadoes, but those are not as large and big and just crazy as um, hurricanes and um, fires and earthquakes. So, eh, that's scary. Oh, Amy says that she didn't get the notification tonight. Um, 
YouTube for me was weird tonight. Like, I just didn't want to make a new stream. So if you're on my YouTube, you'll kind of see that there's no title. It doesn't say anything. I could only hit stream right now. I couldn't hit, like, where I type stuff in. And I don't know, maybe maybe um, Facebook was being a little bit weird then, too. Or Facebook, I think I was just a little bit late with it. Because um, I was trying to figure out the YouTube. So sorry about that bit late here. All right, all I'm doing now is, now here you can see a whole lot better how much batting is actually exposed. That's what we're trying to cover up. So I am just putting uh, my fabric here on the edge, and I'm going to sew it with like an eighth inch seam allowance or so, and uh, that should be enough to hold, hold that edge. And I'm just kind of curving around with the edge. Earlier when I was doing these repairs, I just did straight, you know, like it was another row, but it's been kind of fun just kind of curving around all these mistakes. I kind of like the look of it, even though ultimately the look is kind of going to be invisible. But as I'm working on it, I, I, I like doing it like this. So it's a bummer that we do have to fix these. And I suspect it's just... Um, we happen to be doing these splendid sampler things, which are the small small uh, squares and a lot of those small squares we've accidentally just because there's a lot going on with them just made them a little bit smaller anyway and then when we um, sew the batting to it by quilting it then it you know scrunches up even more and uh, I think this would work better if I was doing like a huge block that had like some applique in the middle and uh, nothing on uh, the edges and then I could leave the edges big until I was ready to sew them together. Uh, I think that would be a better deal for the quilt as you go. But it, it, all in all, this is not that bad having to go back and repair some of these. All right, so now I should just be able to kind of fold this over and that's going to cover up that uh, exposed edge there. I'm just going to press that over to this block. I must have had a lot of issues of cutting and sewing because it's got a lot smaller. I had to repair two size pretty heavily. Oh, our Lola said it was cutting out last night quite a bit. Oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> Mary says we have uh, spiders of every shape, color, and size. Yep. That's why, uh, I mean, we, we do too, but they're not, yeah, no, the biggest is like this big. <laughs> and that's big. We don't have any monster spiders, and I suspect it's because we got some nice old frozen winters for a long time. <laughs> Taking care of all them scary biggies. All right, I'm just cutting off the extra... You can use a rotary cutter. I'm just, you know, giving it a little trim real quick. And let's take a look. So we will still be able to see this seam on the back, which is kind of a bummer. But we got a lot going on. Like here, here, this must have been a repair. We got this weird line cutting through there. But this quilt is more for me to practice quilting and try some ideas out and learn more and practice more. So, um little repairs like this, even little repairs like this is learning like, oh, next time I do quilt as, as I go, again, maybe do pieces where it's an applique in the middle and a lot on the edge. That would be, or like embroidery in the middle um, that I can leave a lot of edge. That would be perfect for quilt as you go versus like these really tightly pieced blocks. Um, so I'm learning that. But there we go. We have a cleaned up edge. It is only fabric there now. There's no exposed uh, batting. And uh, we can do the process of attaching these two together now. I think I might give this guy a little press yet. But what we need to do is prep our pieces. So we have our back piece. Um, it's going to be 13 inches because that's the height of our block. I just never trimmed mine, so I'll just trim the excess when I'm done. Uh, and then we have our front piece, which is going to mimic our sashing, where we have a white piece, a little uh, square, and then another white piece. So this guy will go up there. Let's grab... This guy can be our 
middle piece. Oh, we did that one there. Let's see. Do I have another one hanging out here? Let's do this light, light blue one. There we go. And one more. So these are the same strips that I've been doing all the repairs with. I just cut a bunch. Eventually, I'm going to have to cut more of all of this. I didn't count. I just started cutting. Uh, but there we go. So we got to start off by sewing these together. And then we'll press it. And then we'll press this. This will actually have to press in half the long way so we can get like our nice binding strip basically. And that will be that. Then we can start sewing them together and uh, doing our hand stitching again. So this is basically what we've been doing the last few nights. Um, if you're new tonight, we are doing the part of the quilt as you go process where we take our finished quilted pieces and uh, um, attaching them to each other. So this is, this is a, at least one way. Um, I'm sure there's probably more ways that you can attach quilted blocks and not have any exposed edges. Cause that's the magic, right? Like you think, well, how can I sew one block to another, because it'll be super bulky in the middle because there's all that batting, and how do I hide that edge? Um, so this is an example of one of those processes, and I think that actually might be my last, my last uh, available um, dark piece of, um, of my leaders and enders, all the other ones are sewn. So I'm, I'm going to ultimately make another quilt out of these pieces. Two half square triangles get in one of these, but I need, um, I ran out of pieces. I only have the light colors left. So I guess that means we are going to go back to our normal little leader, which is just a little piece of fabric that I keep sewing over and over again. This is so I don't have to take, um, these pieces off the machine every time and I get just like a nice little clip of, of thread there. I don't have all these strings everywhere. Oh, poor little leader. Okay, so here is what's going to become that sashing piece. So we just have to press those seams and uh, I'm going to press them outward like that and we'll also press our other objects here. Okay, let's get this out. Actually, while, while I'm here, let's just give this guy one extra little press. There we go. Make him a little easier. Oops. Got reading comments and pressed right over it. Oh, Carol's asking what made the fabric short. So in theory, let's just take a look at this. In theory, we're making six and a half inch blocks, right? So when we sew them all together, um, they should end up being like six inches once they're in the quilt. However, when we were making the original blocks, some of them are so intricate, like, I don't know, like, like this one, for example, there's so much going on here that um, sometimes my finished piece was just a hair smaller than it needed to be. This one, for example, there's so many tiny, tiny pieces um, that I, it, it just, my seam allowances were a little big. So my final um, square ended up a little bit smaller than uh, the six and a half inches. However, um, this one, for example, too, is using some thicker batting. So uh, you can see there's a lot in the quilting here. There's a lot of extra fabric. Well, that has to come from somewhere. So this poof of fabric, you know, is kind of coming in from the edges. So we're sewing it down. And if this is all sewn, the only place it can pull from is like over here. So it's kind of pulling like that. So that loses like little, little tiny hairs, like millimeters and, you know, even less than millimeters keep coming in and in and in as I'm quilting. So that again, pulled even more from the edge. So if this needed to be exactly six and a half inches once it was quilted, 
by that time it was more like maybe six and an eighth inch or sometimes even only six inches. Uh, so that's, that's the problem. So that's why I needed the repair. However, different blocks like this one, which is all embroidered or this one, which is all, um, it just had, um, uh, some foundation paper piecing and then the edges were all white. I was able to leave excess fabric around. So I, I made a block that was bigger than it needed to be. And then once I sewed it and uh, um, did the quilting, so it's, it's still all kind of pulling towards the inside, just like by little microns, you know, um, then uh, uh, I still had excess because I made the original block a little bit bigger. So this block, these types of blocks worked amazing uh, for this for this process because I could just trim it down. Ultimately, it is my six and a half inch block when I'm done, but with all the maneuvering of the quilting and pulling, um, I still had that extra because I, I started out with like a seven inch block instead of the six and a half. So that's that's why it got a little bit short. It's just that pulling from quilting. So if I were to pick a quilt to do quilt as you go again, I would pick something more like if I had a bunch of embroideries, I would just leave my block a little bit bigger, quilt it, and then cut it. Or like some appliques, something like that, versus these really intricate blocks. Um, I would just uh, I would just choose my blocks differently. Again, another intricate pieced block where I had exactly the right amount, but then after quilting, it gets a little sucked in. Those ones need the little repairs. But you know, this one, for example, just applique, I had a big extra edge, no problem quilting and then then cutting it off later. So that's that's kind of what was going on there. All right, this guy's done. Let's fold this guy in half. So this is gonna be our binding piece on the back. This is gonna be the thing that covers up our raw edges after we sew things together. And, and that'll make sense in a moment here. So I'm gonna press that in half. So I have um, a raw edge side and then a pretty folded side. And if you're using a fabric with a pattern, you're gonna want the good side on the outside and the, the wrong side of the fabric on the inside of this fold. So it should be, the pretty side should be out. I'm using a um, solid, so it doesn't really matter. Mine's the same on both, but there we go. Got that piece. And now we are ready to start attaching, attaching these. So I'm just kind of getting that stuff out of the way. I'm going to attach it to this side. So the first thing um, I'm going to uh, work with is this side, uh, but we can just kind of see just to peek. This sashing strip is going to go right down the middle here, and I'm going to try and align this middle piece with the sashing on either side here. That'll make it so I can get that square right in the middle. So what I'm going to start out with is I'm going to align it to, to this piece. I can use the sashing right there, those, those seams as a guide. So let's get it up on the edge and match the seam lines. And then I know it is uh, placed correctly. Let's just put a clip there. And we're actually sewing this on at the same time. So the raw edges, those are the edges um, on the one side, there's the two layers and the other side is that pretty fold. The raw edges, we are gonna put outward. So it's gonna match up with the raw edges on this block or on this side. And uh, I'm gonna line up the end here. And I'm actually going to just clip it in the middle where, where this is. Let's just take this off quick and put it right back on. But now I have the third layer clipped. And now let's just align all three edges and add a few more clips. You can use um, pins as well, but I do recommend using something because this is pretty floppy and it's a lot of layers. So it, it would be hard to manage if I didn't clip them together, I think. 
So we have all the layers of whatever has been sewn in the block. We have the layers of the back fabric. We have the layer of the batting. And also now the layer of this binding piece and our front piece. So it is quite a few things going on here. However, my machine has been just going through it like nothing. So I'm pretty dang happy about that. <laughs> Uh, no problem whatsoever. So really, I could have trimmed my strips to 13 inches, which is the size of my block. I could have done that beforehand, but I'm just, you know, was like, meh, I'll cut it out after. So this doesn't actually need to be here. Um, we'll cut that off later. But all right, we're going to just sew our quarter inch down that edge. And uh, that's step one. And again, we're sewing all of these layers all at once. Alright, and I think because it's so many layers, I'm going to have to get it up in here to start it out. Ooh, let's... Whoa! Lost my scissors. The floor should be higher. I should just be surrounded by table. Like, I can be, like, a little square in the middle of this table here, and then I... Then, um... <laughs> everything that falls will just fall back onto the table. Alright, that started... I'm going to get rid of that clip, and now, ooh, it's being mad at me. All right, now it's going. Removing the clips as I go. All right, so now this is, you know, I placed the square here, so I don't really want it to move. I'm going to just help it out with my, my stiletto, which I'm just using the scissors as a stiletto. Let's get my my leader here, and we'll clip it off. And actually, let's just cut this right off right away too. Uh, we can actually trim that better, but he doesn't need to be here anymore. All right, so there is our first little bit. Oh gosh, I wasn't all that lined up there, but oh well. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's press this and see what we have. So I'm going to just give this a little press, uh, but I'm not going to press this side. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep this side pointing away, just how it will naturally naturally be. Yeah, not all these guys are. I'm not doing the best job at matching the middle. And actually, I might not even try to match the middle here. Okay, so now I'm going to take the, the next piece, and we're going to actually sew. We're going to just sew this one little flap. So just that sashing piece. So you can see, here's the sashing, and we did not press this over. We are going to just sew this sashing piece onto our next, um, our next piece here. I think I've been liking doing it this way where I can actually see the piece but the trick is I want to make sure I've been kind of shifting my blocks a little bit like they've been kind of been stair-stepping a little bit so I want to make sure that I'm all lined up here that one block lines up with the other see I think I need to stretch this down a little bit let's just put a clip there that's actually how we probably should have done this like let put a clip in the middle to kind of line up that piece. Although again, it, it shifted a little bit, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. So I'm going to just worry about pinning the top and the bottom, get those aligned with the other block. So it went over the edge a little bit here, the sashing piece, so I can just uh, match it up a little bit lower. And now we'll just kind of balance out the middle and see what we got. Yeah. 
the middle will be a little shifted, but I think I did that the first time through. We'll see. Whatever happens with this, I think we'll be fine. All right, we're all clipped in. So now we're going to sew our quarter inch again. Uh, this flap will still be here. We're not sewing that. Um, but our two pieces will be attached by the sashing piece in the front. And then we'll just have all these raw edges that we need to cover up. Maria, I've actually been testing out these scissors. We're going to try and get some manufactured, I think. I really kind of like them. Um, we're just about out of our stork scissors. We're, uh, uh, I think we only have like one more of these guys in the shop. So I think we might try and get some more of these, but I've been playing out, playing with some new ones. And I do kind of like, I like the length of this and I have been like, I like how long uh, um, and skinny those guys are. And I like that I can just kind of use it as my stiletto and it comes with like a bunch of different colors. So I'm, I've been testing them. So they may be in the shop soon, uh, <laughs> but I've, I've been kind of having fun with them. So if there is a, I'll get some more samples, but if there is a color that you would love to see on the handle, um, let me know. I'm, I'm working, working on some new supplies for the shop. So hopefully some, a variety of fun scissors. Um, this is the same place that makes, um, uh, these like hemostat guys. That's what these are called, right? Um, these are those clamps that you can hold like to pull corners out of, um, you know, if you're turning something right side out, uh, it really just clamps it down. You know, <laughs> it's supposed to like hold veins and stuff, but uh, it's by the same place. So I'm trying to kind of dig into that some more. But soon, hopefully, we will have some more fun stuff over in the penguin and fish shop some cute new scissors and some other things. But yeah, so right now uh, they're from nowhere. <laughs> uh, it's a sample from um, one of my manufacturers I work with. But a fun thing that I wasn't really expecting when I was playing around with this is that how much I am actually using it as a stiletto. Um, which is fun because I'm already holding it like a scissor so I can just get in here and cut, you know, right away without grabbing a new tool. <laughs> so that's been kind of fun. All right, let's flip this. Ooh, Maria likes the uh, blue. Ooh, a blue would be so pretty, wouldn't it? All right, so what we're left with is our two pieces sewn together. Okay, I did a much better job at lining up the blocks than I did yesterday, uh, so that makes me happy. I don't have that stair step effect, although I don't think I sewed my first strip that I sewed on here, the sashing, I didn't line up very well, but um, that's not gonna be a big issue. They're even, that's, that's nice. So we're actually attached. We have our, um, our three chunks are now attached. However, we still have the back, which we just sewed those two sashing pieces. So we have these two super raw um, edges here, right? With tons of batting in there. Uh, that can't stay like that, obviously. We got to cover that up. And that's where our little binding piece comes in. That little extra piece that we sewed on at the beginning, that is going to flip over. And I'm going to hand stitch um, now that, that pretty folded edge, that pretty folded edge is what we have left. I'm going to hand stitch that to um, the back here. And I'm actually going to use my sewing line as a guide. So we're just going to fold it and stitch all the way down. Uh, will we finish that tonight? We're a bit farther than we've been uh, at this point. Uh, so I think we're going to see if we can... Uh, stitch that whole thing up in a half hour, I think. I think that should probably be just the right amount of time. So I'm going to get, uh, uh, this is my little, uh, little tiny bag of 
hand quilting supplies. Uh, one of the things I was trying to figure out earlier in the year is how to use a thimble correctly and uh, do some hand quilting, uh, learn that whole process. So I actually got some tools and I'm working on a, a hand quilting project uh, um, in the living room. <laughs> elsewhere in the house so I always put together a pack of the things that I need for that and which includes a scissors I love having a bunch of little small scissors around and I just keep them with all the different projects I have going on so I just grabbed this from my hand quilting project because I was going going to use uh, some of the tools so this is that uh, thimble lady thimble ladies thimble they've patented this style um, where the hand geez where the hand goes all the way through or the finger goes all the way through and they have a deeper set of holes here so you can actually get it from the side because there's a big enough hole um, or you can get it this way uh, but the idea is with this you're pushing the needle through your fabric with your finger like this versus your finger like this like if you have one that has the whole entire cap on and you're meant to push like this so this takes a lot of pressure off the hand which I can you can actually feel that like I can feel my hand kind of cramping like right here by going like this uh, whereas here that that completely goes away it's relaxed there so that's been fun I'm trying to learn how to use this some more and then this is a little silicone one uh, <laughs> that I've been trying to get comfortable with too this is to help pull the needle through I actually haven't had too much trouble with this particular project but um, when you're hand quilting sometimes you're getting more than one stitch at a time so you're loading up your needle with stitches and then that's really hard to pull through or you're using some thicker fabric and uh, you know some of these extra tools um, are handy and so I'm just kind of using them to practice with uh, today I forgot what needle I was using I don't want to use one of these shorty needles but my other this is just a stack of totally random needles. Oh, there we go. I think this is the one that we've been using. It's a straw needle. It is a bit, um, let's get a, a, just a normal, like, universal needle. So it's just longer. Let's see if I can get that for you guys. There. It's just longer than the universal sharp. It's called a sharp, <laughs> which is just a silly name for a style of needle, but it's called a sharp. And this is a straw or Milner's one. They're longer uh, and they, I think, have been working really nicely for this hand quilting, this um, binding. So I'm going to get that out. Um, I've just been using... Um, I'm going to take these off while I do all this. I've just been using my 50 weight thread however a lot of people say that they love 80 weight because it's even thinner um, I do not have any 80 weight but I'd love to try it sometime okay let's get this now that I'm let's be a little bit more prepped tonight I'm gonna put it through my my uh, conditioning wax uh, right away I forgot to do it last night and this is gonna really just all these little curls and squiggles in it it's gonna get rid of that and it's going to just um, put like a little coating of wax almost on this, which is just going to make this stronger and heftier and easier to sew with. All right. You can kind of feel that wax coating. There's those silicone based versions of these. I haven't bought any yet, but I'd, I'd like to try that out. Oh, uh, Sue is saying that the back of the quilt looks so nice. All the stitches really show up well. They do. I I think um I think I'm gonna really like the back of this quilt, um even more than the front because this quilt for me is really about the experiment of just the quilt as you go, which allows you to quilt smaller areas, and just practicing. Um, you know, I'm pretty new to uh machine quilting get in there there we go I think I'm new at least I feel new <laughs> I feel just maybe a hair above introductory how about that I feel just a hair above the introductory level of um, machine quilting but definitely still a beginner so um, to practice on these small chunks versus having to practice on a whole giant quilt 
has been just so freaking fun. And uh, I think just really valuable to work on these smaller little, they're almost like little test quilts. And then we just sewn them together later. It's just such a fun way to do it. Um, so some people have said that they use their thumb for this, this um, silicone piece. I'm going to give that a try to try today. It's definitely a little tighter. Um, but let's, let's see if that works better. I suspect I've tried this last time we did this and I think I probably liked, um, probably liked it on my pointer finger better. Oh, you know what? Let's, let's press this over quick. That helped, that helped the first day a little bit. So let's just encourage this piece to go this way. So let's get the iron back out and press that seam over. I can actually kind of press this one down a little bit too. Squish it. I mean, it's going to want to flop backwards, but it'll at least kind of have the memory that it wants to go this way a little bit. So I think that's going to be helpful. Oh, let's hope I didn't just totally lose my needle. There it is. <laughs> so I am still learning how to use the thimble better. And I am very clunky with it yet. But I was getting better at it last night. So I'm going to, I'm going to try and channel last night a little bit. And um, see if I can get this going well again. So I'm just going to go around this spot twice. All right. And I think to hold it, it was easier for me to kind of fold this piece and then push this piece down like that. Okay. Let's give it a go. So I am going in just the back kind of in the same spot and then coming up in the front and the back a stitch length away or so. So about a quarter of an inch or a little less. And then we're pulling it through. So I'm in the front now. Now I'm going just across right into the back and then over and up through the front again as well. Oops, stabbing myself. Okay, definitely not feeling super coordinated yet. What helped last night was I took off all the stuff and did a couple stitches, I think like three stitches, how I normally just do it. And I'm like, oh, I'm holding things weirder with it all on. Let's adjust how I'm holding things. And then that helped so much. Oh, Sue says, either side, it will look great on a bed. I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, I, and the other thing that I was attempting with this quilt that I haven't done before is trying to do just some pale light colors and have it work as a quilt. Because I've just been choosing like just these bright colors for all my quilts lately. And I'm like, can I even do a color where, or a quilt where I'm limited to like these light colors? So we've kind of... Uh, deemed this the blonde quilt. Uh, I still think it looks it, like in my head. It still doesn't look like a like a little pretty neutral light quilt. It still feels poppy, <laughs> uh, poppy to me for some reason. So I actually so Teresa's asking. Um, what, what might we do after the granny square quilt? Um, so that actually does have quite a bit. I'm a, just about half, like a, just over halfway in that as well. Although I would love to take one of these Saturdays and just try and crank out a ton of those blocks. Um, we got a pretty intricate border to do for that project too. So there is quite a bit on that. And then, you know, quilting and all that too. 
However, um, we might come back later to quilting. So one project I was thinking it would be nice to do, and this would be for next year. So let me know if this is, uh, I have this available. Um, I'll, I'll get it out maybe tomorrow and show you, but I thought it might be fun to do the alphabet embroidery quilt. Um, and that actually we could do quilt as you go, potentially. Um, but it's a quilt that it would be like kind of a fun embroidery thing, but you could do any embroideries that you want, actually any blocks that you want. Uh, but I was thinking it would be like this nice quilt that ha would have all of our penguin and fish alphabet animals embroidered on. And um, maybe I'd have the fabric available for it too. And uh, we could stitch those and sew them together in a quilt. I was kind of thinking that would be a f really fun thing to do. Um, it's been asked for for like a bajillion years and I haven't ever uh, um, gotten it all together to do that. But I thought that might be a fun project. I'm actually thinking we might be done with this project sooner than late. I mean, you know, still a long time yet because we're just not even half, well, we're just like at half the halfway point. Um, but we won't have to quilt it. We won't have to hardly do anything anymore because all we won't have to sandwich it together because those parts are all good. We're doing that as we go. So I think we're deceptively a little further on this project. But yeah, so that's one idea for a project. I'd love to actually do some maybe smaller smalling pro uh, s smaller uh, sewing projects as well. Um, like there's that book cover I still want to do. Um, and that. So the koala quilt, uh, Pat's saying that she missed a few sections. Where's the koala quilt? Uh, it is, we still have to do that label and I'm hoping, <laughs> you know, with all these little things going on, it's, it's hard to just get the stuff done. So, um, the actual quilt is done except for the label. So I still want to design a label quick. You guys gave some really good ideas of what should go on it and I'll keep you guys updated with that as well. Um, updated with what the label should say, like before I send it to get printed. Um, cause I'm going to, I think put like a cute border on it and get it printed at spoon flower. Um, they print on fabric and I think it'll just be more permanent that way. And, um, then we have that extra koala that we'll, we'll, um, put on it as well. But before I send it off, I want to get all of you guys go ahead on what the label says. So I'll be sure to post about that. But that will soon be done too. And then we'll have um, the auction for it. And that will all be donated to Australians for animals as well. So all of um, from buying, purchasing the pattern and stitching up those koalas and your extra donations and then the auction um, money will all go to Australians for Animals to help those koala guys. Oh, exactly. So, um, t exactly, Teresa. So Teresa's saying maybe as a palette cleanser, do a smaller project like you want a, or finish a work in progress. Um, exactly. Uh, and I'd love to actually pepper some more of that sort of thing as we go throughout these quilts. Because, I mean, well, we do have like a, uh, like a several weeks off since I'm doing a project um, every week. But it would be fun to do some smaller size, um, smaller size sewing projects. And that I can tell you about beforehand. And um, so you have time to get supplies and, and that sort of thing or, or scrounge up fabric. Um, so it, it would be nice to have just some smaller than quilting projects, uh, other sewing things, other stitching things, you know, maybe we even do some other crafts like crochet and knitting as well. One idea that we wanted to do was 
actually crochet some granny squares because that's really what that granny square quilt is based on. It's based on those crocheted afghans of, um, the, made out of that granny square look of crochet. And it's actually a really great um, beginning project, those granny squares. So I think that might be fun to do as well. So yeah, so they might not, the projects that we do, the smaller size projects, they might be still longer than a week, but maybe not longer than two weeks. A week to two week type projects instead of these major quilts that take forever. Although I've learned so much from all these quilts and that granny square quilt has been just so fun. Then that was on the docket for years beforehand. Like we really wanted to do that. And finally, like three years later, we actually started that. And I'm really happy we did. But I don't think, um, when I'm done with this splendid sampler, if any more of these come out, I think, I think I'm done with these splendid samplers. I have learned more on these quilts than like any other thing I've worked on. Uh, so they've been awesome. But <laughs> I don't know if I can take a huge undertaking like, like this one again. But it, it definitely would be nice to do some smaller projects and finish up some things like, you know, we have the triangle tangle one to quilt. And now I have the I love home. The back for that is finally, finally done. Um, I don't know if you were here for finish it Friday last, uh, was it last week? We worked on the I love home quilt back, which I was um, making out of all of the leftover fabric i got some fuzzles hanging out here. I'm going to try and stuff them underneath. And uh, I actually spent last Saturday a little bit finishing sewing that up. Um, I had to lay it all out in my living room and just grab the pieces and bring back to sew. So I couldn't really film that very well. But um, So the back is actually done. Oh, thank goodness. That's just like a relief even saying that. <laughs> Every time I say it, it's like, ah, oh, finally. Because um, that guy's been sitting around too. But yeah, it would be fun to sandwich that quilt and um, get that quilt up. So now I remember when we were working at that, I wanted to try and do some fancy quilting, like where I actually paid attention to the block and like we like we trace around the block and do like you know fancy corners and all the corners of the each block. And I kind of wanted to do like a planned you know, fancy quilting type thing. So we'll readdress that and see if that's still what we want to do once we got it all sandwiched. I figure I'll bring a whole pile of quilts. Uh, oh, well, I guess I will only have that I Love Home quilt, but I'll bring the I Love Home quilt uh, to my parents' house next time I'm there and they have a bigger floor <laughs> to sandwich quilts and see if my mom has any quilt tops that she needs to sandwich and we'll just have a, a sandwich party. Get them all sandwiched and all ready to quilt. Get these guys done. All right, we are getting there with this guy. I'm still trying to get over to this seam here and that's been a little difficult. But I haven't been thinking too much about my thimble, which makes me think that I'm doing it <laughs> a bit more comfortably than um, earlier and then last night. So that's been nice. I've been able to read some comments and just chill and relax a little bit, which is the whole kind of point of this hand quilting. It's just a time to chill. Oh, so Pat, so if Pat's wondering how to put her blocks together. And I mean, cause everyone's still, everyone's looks so awesome. I totally agree. Um, you definitely don't need to do quilt as you go for the first splendid sampler. I had not done any free motion quilting before, like none of this stuff. So for the first quilt, 
I actually just stitched in the ditch, which just means you sew down the seams. Um, so for the first for the first splendid sampler, I just uh, I, I didn't put any sashing in. I just put the blocks right next to each other, so all the blocks touched, and then I just sewed down the seams of all of them. So I just sewed one long seam all the way down the entire quilt. Um, you know, and I did that there, and I sewed all the way down that other side. I had zero quilting within the blocks, like literally zero. It was just that one stitched down the side. And then same thing on the border. I just did some straight lines. So I, I, it's very, very, very minimal stitching or quilting and it looks totally fine. Uh, it doesn't need to be fancy. It still looks like an accomplishment, <laughs> like that finished quilt with all those different blocks on, it's, it's still fine. So I wouldn't, you could totally just do that too. You don't have it, have to have it be like quilt as you go or all these, um, all this quilting, like this is pretty densely quilted. Oof, man, I am near, I'm, I'm near our kitchen and uh, we make coffee in the morning and I'm getting like just the little smell of like coffee grounds and uh, I wish so much that I could just fall asleep after having coffee. John could have coffee right now and he'd be good to go, but man, I would be up the entire night, really. I could be as tired as can be and still be up if I had coffee now, but right now, like, this time of day would be, like, the best time for coffee. It'd be the best, just yummy nighttime special thing to have. <laughs> so I'm getting a sniff of that, and I'm like, oh, I can't have you, little coffee. Uh, Pat says she is an older model long arm and I usually follow pantographs. Well, that's, that's totally, I mean, that's a fantastic idea. So if you guys don't know what either of those things are, a long arm is a, a, a type of sewing machine frame and it typically has like a, a type of sewing machine on it and it's huge. Like it'll fill, I mean, it would fill my living room, um, but you know, they can be like, probably eight to 12 feet across and then maybe five feet. I mean, I don't know this for sure, but like five feet deep and you roll a quilt onto two rolls and then you have a sewing machine that has handles like this and you can just move, you can stand up and move the whole sewing machine. So instead of moving the fabric, you're moving the sewing machine. So it's even more like drawing. Um, and then you can go all the way up and down the quilt and then you roll the quilt a little bit more and then you do the next se section, but you can do the whole edge of the quilt. So that's called a long arm quilt or a long, long arm um, sewing machine, which would be just so cool. I would love to play around with an, one of those more. Um, and then a pantograph is basically a tool that you can use on those machines. I mean, nowadays they make um, a lot of those long arm sewing machines. They have it all digital and you can just, you can do it by hand where you're the one moving it around, but you can also just look up like fun little designs and then let the machine go. <laughs> you just hit like go and then it'll stitch it all for you. The thing in the middle of those two things is kind of a, it's called a, pantog a pantograph. And uh, it's basically s like a design on uh, like, it's like a stencil almost um, that's already like physical. It's a physical thing that you put on your quilt and then you can just follow that design. So you're, you're still doing it, but you have a design to follow. And I mean, that sounds, I mean, that's a great idea. You can get some really cute designs that way and um, don't have to worry about you know, it looking, or like, you know, that you have to make up different designs and yeah, that's awesome. 
Ooh, Pat says that hers has a 10 foot frame. It's the best part of the quilt. Oh, best part of the quilt. Like that's your favorite part is doing that. Oh, dang. I would, that just sounds so exciting to me. Oh, cool. So Pat says that for her, like, pantograph it's a long sheet of print of a printed pattern that she follows with a laser light Ooh. oh oh yeah i've seen this so you know you're going like this right but if you go to a part of the machine you can actually put a piece of paper out that's actually not on the quilt it's actually on a little area behind the quilt and you can actually just look at that and so pat's saying she is a laser so if my quilt's over here my quilt that i'm quilting is over here so the machine is stitching over here but i have you know, right here, my printed out paper that has like leaves and swirls and whatever, right? Um, and then I have a laser here and then I follow that laser um, and I'm just following the design here, which again is not part of the quilt. And then it's sewing it up here. So like it's going at the same time like that. Um, I have seen, I've, I've, I've seen those on videos, but I haven't seen it done that way in person, but it's almost like you're standing behind behind the quilt almost, right? So you could walk around to the other side and then do it directly on the quilt, like just look at your quilt. But if you're standing on the other side, you're just kind of following, you know, the path. Ah, oh, for fun. Oh, I would love to play around with that. Oh yeah, so Pat, uh, Pat says it lays, the pantograph lays on a long table on the back side of the, um, uh, on the back side of the like um, the sewing machine frame. Oh, Catherine says coffee doesn't bother me at night, but I'm conditioned to drink it in the morning. Yeah, that's that's sometimes the only thing that gets me up in the morning is like, oh, I can go downstairs and drink coffee in my chair. It's like the best part of the day <laughs> is sitting in my chair with that coffee. Ah, uh, besides this nice evening where I get a craft with you guys. Those two points of the day. <laughs> Those are good, good parts. All right, and just like that, we are done with the back. Oh, and it happens to be just 9.30 as well. Well, that turned out to be perfect timing. Um, let's let's uh, take off, holy cow, take off these guys. So... I totally forgot that, that this was on my thumb, so maybe I do like it on the thumb better. I'll have to try it on my finger again next time, but like I said, I just completely forgot while I got talking that it was on my thumb. So that's good. Let's um, give Zeb his needle back. There we go. Boop. And uh, let's trim our little excess here. And see what we got. So, like I said, this is the last uh, last piece I have available to attach. We do have um, the two rows finished that we could attach the long edge, but I'm not ready for that yet. That's that's a whole nother week's worth of, of stuff. But we got these three attached, so a whole nother um, bit here. So this row needs uh, two more, which is actually four, because you know, one, two, three, four, but you know, it's, we're doing them in groups of four. So we just need the two chunks, um, like what we've been doing, the back and, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to make more. I have, I have no blocks done. So sometimes we'll make a few of these and I'll have a bunch of blocks and then, uh, you know, I'll switch off. But at this point, we literally have no more blocks. <laughs> so we are starting from square one again, getting a whole pile more of these. And I have been, uh, here's the book. I have been just um, going down the list. Oh, someone asked uh, yesterday that I just saw um, how I've been um, picking which blocks I'm, I'm doing. So at the beginning, I think I was doing them at the same time that the, the sew along was, the quilt along. So this, this was like ugh, over a year ago, but, um, you know, so I, I was kind of just doing what everyone else was doing. 
Uh, and then I was just kind of picking some fun ones or I was taking requests. So like if someone wanted like, let's do, let's do this one. Then I'm like, okay, sounds good. We'll do that one. Now I'm in the mode of let's just get them all done. So I am literally just going down the list of ones that I don't have done yet. Everyone that that's highlighted or crossed off, I, I have finished. So the next one on the list is button up on page 90. And I'm literally just going to keep going down the list, getting them done. So we're basically going in alphabetical order at this point. Um, all right, it's not chronological order though. So button up is number 90, or page on page 90. Ooh, this one looks kind of fun. So it's, it's like this, but look, we are doing some strip piecing stuff and then cutting it all funny. Uh, this reminds me a lot of um, the granny squirt quilt where we are cutting where we're getting our strips and then chopping it up in weird ways. So, all right, button up. This looks like it's probably appliqued when we're done as well. Um, all right, so we'll start on that one tomorrow. Definitely won't get that one done. There's a whole lot of applique on there, but we'll get it started. And then I'm curious what's after that. Okay, changing seasons will be after that. So that's 62. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, th this is um the Changing Seasons one. Oh, that's by Jane Davidson. She's one of the authors. That uh, is really rather adorable. It's just a simple block with some applique, and this it looks like it's um uh needle turn. <laughs> that's the term. Needle turn applique. That'll be fun to give that a go again, and just with these four shapes, that will be pretty easy. That's sweet. I like those colors on there. So those are our next two blocks will be these guys. And now I'm looking at this one. We have not done him yet either. Whole pile of them we don't have done yet, you guys. <laughs> All of these look unfamiliar. I, well, that's on deck here. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, that's the plan for tomorrow. Hello, so here is what this looks like now, all connected. So this is this is the one here that we did that we did tonight. But it looks like a quilt from far away. It's coming together. Ah, and then our other ones, we have two rows of five. And we worked on these uh, this week too. So here's here's a row of five. So this is the this is um the entire length. So this is what it's going to look like. And then we just have to sew the long, the long um, rows together. So we have that one. It's looking like a quilt. It's looking like a quilt as we're working on it, which is kind of fun. And then this guy here is another one that we have another finished row. So this one could actually be sewn to the other one. Uh, along that long edge and it would be done the same way we would make that sashing piece but we'd make it long to go all the way across and then we'd have to make a really long binding piece to go across I have not tried that yet so uh, maybe we do that um, after we get a few more of these blocks done because it's time to switch back to these blocks let's take a few more off of these uh, of these off the list and then we'll try doing that really long seam I think that'll be a good accomplishment. We'll have like a quarter of the quilt done then. <laughs> uh, awesome. So thank you guys again. We will come back tomorrow, Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central, and we'll get that, that uh, the button-up block started. So thanks again, and I'll see you then. Good night.